Hello and welcome back. Today we've got an exciting tutorial. We're talking about the Elastic Load Balancer. So let's look at a simple architecture. We have an EC2 instance running a website and we have another EC2 instance running the same website. Why that is necessary, we'll find out in a second. What we can do in AWS is we can link them together into a target group. Now it doesn't have to be just two instances. It can be any number of instances. Uh, for the sake of argument, today we'll be just looking at two. So we've linked them up into a target group, and what we can do next is create an application load balancer and connect it to this target group. So why would we do that? What's the purpose of this? Well, remember how in the past we talked about allowing external traffic, users of the internet, to access our EC2 instances. For example, in this case, we're hosting a website on each one, each of our EC2 instances, and we want people to see that website. Well, now, instead of letting people access our EC2 instances directly, we're going to first route them through our application load balancer. And what that will do is the application load balancer will distribute this traffic among the instances in the target group. So that means now we can service more people. So if, for example, one instance can service, let's say, 50,000 people, then two instances together can service 100,000 people. And because they're running the same website, people won't know the difference. But in the background, the application load balancer is balancing out the load, this load that's coming in, and hence the name, application load balancer. And uh, imagine if you have... Uh, not two instances in your target group, but 10. Now all of a sudden you can service half a million users that want to see your website. And that is a huge advantage. Lots of websites around the world, most large websites that you can think of from Google to uh, Netflix to Spotify, um, they all use this method to ensure that their instances uh, are not overloaded. And the other huge advantage that this brings is that now we have um, more resilience in our application. So for example, if one of these EC2 instances were to fail, the application load balancer is smart. It constantly at regular intervals does health checks and it'll pick up that the instance and instance has failed and it'll redirect traffic away from that instance to other instances in the target group. So there's your second huge advantage, that now your application has high availability. And that's also, by the way, the reason why it's recommended to host these instances or to keep these instances in separate availability zones. It's not a requirement, but the more availability zones you can spread your target group across, the better. And this is because if one of the availability zones fails, um, then your application will still be available to users because you have EC2 instances in other availability zones still running and the application load balancer, which by the way is a regional service, something to remember for the exam, application load balancer is a regional service, it's able to redirect the traffic to the uh, still functioning instances in the target group. So there we go, that's how this works. Uh, another thing to remember is that security group rules are still important. So the EC2 instances have their own security groups and the application load balancer has its own security group. And in all of them, you need to enable this incoming traffic. So another thing to look out for on the exam is um, the security group of the application load balancer and of the EC2 instances need to open up, for example, in this case, port uh, 80 for HTTP incoming traffic. So that's all on the load balancer. And here's a quick uh, text summary of what we discussed. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.